car audio, etc., is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Is it the right kit? <gasps> no! Good morning, guys. How's it going? James here from Car Audio, etc. Continuing on the Audi A4 project today. I'm just gonna basically finish off the reversing camera and I'm gonna try and get the stereo done. I'm still waiting on parts to arrive for it and I'm also still waiting on carpet to arrive for the Corvette. So I do want to, oh shit. Wow, it's still on. I've left this on accessory all night. It's still going, Jesus. Well, this is gonna need a charge. This battery. Like, oh god, that hurt. Everything about this van hurts. Like, there's just bits of metal sticking out everywhere. Anyway, back to the Audi. Um, yeah, I, so I'm still waiting on carpet for the Corvette to arrive so I can carpet the sub box. I'll probably do that in a separate video to this one. I'm gonna keep this one surrounding the Audi, and then when the carpet arrives, I'll stop on the Audi, do the sub box, make a separate video, and yeah. So, basically, I just wanna, I'm, I've done a couple things. I just wanted to start filming now because, uh, I want to show you a little technique we use here at uh, AutoSim when we're doing reversing cameras. So you saw yesterday I got the reversing camera all installed last night. And what we got here is 12 volt power supply. Got the wire plugged into the uh, reversing camera lead that's inside there just popping out with the trunk closed. And then we got, uh, what is it? So this little thing is the adapter lead for it which gives it power and gets the signal out, converts the power down to 5 volts. And we've just got it hooked up to this uh, little, like sort of, uh, it's just a test screen, like just a old second hand thing with an AV input. So we hook it up and then we just sort of look at our screen and adjust the camera as necessary. You know, if it's like one of the butterfly mount ones that can angle, we can use this sort of thing to uh, adjust as we go. I think that's gonna be a good view. And also what we like to do is walk from like the edge of the car. See, I'm like right, up against the bumper there and you can still see my foot in the corner and then we do that for both sides to make sure that the because the point of the camera is to stop you from backing into things you need to be able to see it so i'm right in line with the edge of the car here and you can still see my my foot in the corner there and it looks like we can get quite far back as well like because i can see all the way back to just beyond that corner there which is maybe three or four meters away from the car and you obviously got a nice view of the table as well so that's good i'm happy with that happy with that view that means i can start putting the trunk back together not the trunk just the uh, lid so i can put this section back together my hands are freaking freezing this morning by the way it's literally only one degree celsius this morning in christchurch 9 20 in the morning one freaking degree High of eight. Yay, New Zealand. So I've just been trying to figure out between myself and Pat what subwoofer to put in here because we know we want to do one on the tray um, a couple, one or two you suggested them in boxes or something. I think the whole point of this OEM style job guys is to replace the OEM equipment so we're going to be doing it on the parcel tray to make it as out of the way and original as possible but upgraded sound. So this here is a donut for a um, Rockford Fosgate 8 inch coaxial speaker. And you can kind of see that it's like, oh, what would be the best? I think I need to put you guys in here. So, like the whole speaker almost would fit through the hole and the woofer cell itself would be quite small, I think, compared to the hole. I feel like we can get a 10 inch in there, you know? I, originally I thought it was a 10 inch. Then I started thinking, make, thinking maybe it was an eight inch. I feel like we can get a 10 inch in here in some way. So what I did, I unbolted this old, uh, Alpine Type S 10 inch that we've had in stock for a while. 
Obviously we wouldn't put this in because this thing's huge and heavy. If I go like this, the membrane of the woofer pretty much almost fits perfectly through there. Almost. So I think what I want to do is try fit a 10 inch and I'll build, I'm going to build like a donut or something that where it will hang off like that. And the membrane will have room to move inside here. I won't have to cut the metal. I'll make a piece of wood which will sit in here like an 18 mil bit will go in and then another piece on the bottom with this screwed to it will sandwich the metal and it'll be a really strong connection to the tray and it'll be uh, RTV'd as well probably to prevent vibrations so the two pieces of wood will be sandwiched together and then the subwoofer will be screwed to the bottom of it and then what I, maybe I could even put a piece of wood under the sub as well like a triple sandwich so a piece of wood here here then the sub and then another piece under that and I could put big M6 bolts or something like that through all the way through all of them maybe it definitely like I'd like to have the woofer straight up against it but I don't think it's gonna work see because here it's hitting on this rail at the front of the thing unless I put it dead up like that but then I have to try and make a um, weird angled baffle and I don't have the tools to do that I don't think not to make it nice anyway so I would really like to try and squeeze a 10 inch in there I think put out a lot more base than an 8 inch and the 8 inches that are available even slimline ones and everything they I don't think they'd handle the power coming from the Rock Fosgate amp that well because that amp puts out between 4 and 600 watts RMS most of the 8 inches that Rock Fosgate do are only sort of 150 to 200 RMS so I think either a P3 slim 10 or a T1 slim 10 is going to be the best bet but there is as I thought there was so the, the P3 slim line 10 which is 300 watts RMS 600 watts peak that's not too bad that's 399 and the T1 S110 power series 10 inch which is 500 watts RMS and 1000 watts peak 950 so there's 550 more bucks just to go up a step in range so I'm gonna ask the customer what he wants to do he may not want to spend nearly a grand on a subwoofer in fact to be honest I'm probably gonna recommend the punch one to him just because this is on a parcel tray application it's not on a proper sealed enclosure I feel like he's not gonna get as much base out of this parcel tray mounted sub as he would if it was in a box I would agree with you guys on that but that's the way he, where you want to do it. And as much, go, as much as I would like to have a custom subwoofer enclosure in this cavity here, which fills up that whole thing, and then fills up that floor section as well, guys, as much as I'd like to do that, because I know some of you will suggest it. I've said in other videos before, I don't do fiberglass work. I, we, we don't do enough of it for me to have had that much experience with it and therefore skill. I don't have that much skill with fiberglass because just we don't do enough of it because it is expensive, it takes time. It's just not our forte. We do wooden stuff and OEM integration. That's like kind of our forte. It would be cool though, having a sub firing out of the side of there and then the amp up in here, that would be so cool. But, no, nah, sorry guys. I don't know guys, uh, it's just so many options i think what i'm gonna do because i'm just even thinking about the length of the amp now because it's quite an annoyingly long amp i might even wait to do any amp stuff until i've got that and i can test fit places because i'm worried about the length of it in there i don't know i was thinking about putting it behind this hole oh, why can't you guys see it's so dark in here there's a hole up there where the vent went um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that stuff yet. I'm going to wait till I've got the amp and the sub and figure out what I want to do then. But for now, I can run the RCA cable for the uh, reversing camera, get that wired up. I think I can start doing some stuff up the front where the stereo is going to go because the parts should arrive today. And if all else fails, I can at least start doing the front speakers because we have got those in stock. Cool.
think that may have been one of the most OEM style cables I have ever installed. I don't think I've ever put as much effort into running an RCA cable as I did just now. Whoo, holy crap. From the camera to the head unit cavity, it follows the factory loom location and is tessa taped like the whole way. I didn't wrap tessa tape around the RCA the whole way, but it's it tessa taped to all the factory loom the whole way to the stereo. And oh my God, it was not easy. This is an Audi, it was. So, you guys saw what I did with this cable. This just loops out, goes to the factory loom, is tessa taped with the loom all the way down through here, through that. Then we come out of here, you can see where it's tessa taped. Along there, it, you can see it just, just there. Goes along with the factory loom, there's the reducer inside those, uh, what do you call those, organizers or something. There's the RCA connection up there. Let's get my wee LED torch. You'll have to excuse the flickering, but I'm gonna use this little GoPro LED torch that I've got on it. So you guys can see better, cause it's dark in here. So, goes along there. Come, there's the RCA cable we pointed out before. Inside the organizers all the way up. Inside these two organizers, which was not easy, getting my fingers in there. Cause I couldn't just poke it through, I had to release them and then reattach them. Inside that organizer all the way back there. Comes back here, up, through all of these, what, Organizers is probably a weird word. I'd say cable managers would be the word. Through all of these cable managers, up, 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 tessa taped, up into the roof, and then it's just and then it's just sitting on top of the headlining all the way up there to the front where it pops out about here. And I decided at this point that I'll do the microphone at the same time to um, so that I can loom them all together. So the microphone wire comes across, and then it's taped, tessa taped all the way down the factory loom down here drops down through the factory loom hole at the very very back here above the glove box runs with the factory loom and then it drops down here tessa taped to these wires for the airbag don't worry there's no tension or nothing on them and they just i'm just using it to like sort of drape and secure it and then it goes up is cable tied to that bracket so that it can't be yanked on and then drops down and comes out of the head unit hole holy crap that was a lot of work oh Audi. But what's the advantage to that? There isn't really one apart from the fact that if the customer knows about it, they know that you've done a really good job. That's the only advantage. The advantage is I'm knowing myself that the wires have been run really well. <laughs> is it worth it? Yes, it is worth it. It's always worth putting extra effort in. Oh man, so getting this thing off, you guys probably saw in the time lapse a wee bit, but um, getting this nut and this big fat bolt out of here which was threaded into this loose nut here looks like that on that side this was done up so ridiculously tight it's the uh, so it's the style where you thread the bolt in whoops and then you tighten up the nut to secure it but i could not get anything around the nut to loosen that off um i tried slip jaws i tried a 17 mil spanner that belongs to Mark over the road. He, I also tried his uh, deep socket, his deep 17 mil socket. None of them would go all the way over this to the nut. So in the end, and because I was trying this thing to undo that, and it was just like slowly slipping around inside of it, like basically threading it out. So what I ended up having to do was double team this on there and then use Grant's massive vice grips to grip the shit out of. Ugh. And I had to use two hands and loosen it off because it was that difficult. It was like that done up that tight. It was ridiculous. It wouldn't have been a problem if I could get something around that nut to undo it and then just unthread it like normal but like I couldn't get anything because this nut is sunken in to this hole here like look that can't really get around it that can't get enough grip on it it's too sunken in stupid so Audi must have a real special hugely long 17 mil socket that they used to do those up or something because I used a uh 
a deep socket, like your standard spark plug depth sort of 17mm uh, socket to try and it was still way too shallow. I don't think it was the socket's fault, I think the problem was um, the big head of this bolt was hitting the very end of the inside of the socket. But it's okay, because I worked really hard to get it off and I knew I had to get it off because I want to be running RCAs and power cables and speaker cables and stuff through this hole which normally has this big piece of foam in it by the way can't unplug it though because it's got an airbag inside the fucking thing there's airbags for Africa in this car so I can't unplug that unless I disconnect the battery but I usually don't do that these days you don't need to unless I know I'm going to unplug an airbag in which case I do disconnect the battery but not a problem for this undid all these cable manage managers for the uh, future preparation because I know I'm going to be uh, running power cables and stuff along the floor I could take this off, but this panel is under, wait, this panel here is under this panel here, which is under this panel here. Oh, smart. Oh, there's Pat with our coffee. Awesome. So, yeah, there we go. The camera wire and the microphone are done. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the microphone. So the microphone is out on display here, looking all ugly and stupid. The reason I do that is because for a while I was, you know, getting real clever and technical and hiding them inside uh, these factory microphone grills on cars that had them to make them real OEM and stealthy but almost every time I did that the people the customers were saying that people couldn't really hear them that well so I've just decided even though it would look better for the sake of it actually working good I just need to have the microphone out and on display because I tried a bunch of different cars hiding it in behind these factory microphone grills but almost every time it just uh, it affected its ability for people to hear them so that's why that's out and on display and looking ugly I do not like the way they look, I think they look cheap I wish someone would make like an OEM style one which is designed to be mounted behind a sneaky grill somewhere but what can you do? so that's where I'm at 20 minutes later okay so good news, I um, called up the customer, spoke to him about the different subwoofer options and he is all happy for us to go ahead with the power series 10 inch mounted underneath the tray on a couple of donuts firing up through the parcel tray. I explained to him the advantages of the punch or the power. The power one is better rated power wise for the amplifier. Obviously it's a better subwoofer. Yes, it is more expensive. It is slightly shallower than the punch one, interestingly enough, but he said, nah, go for the good one, match it to the amp. So we're doing that. I talked to him about the differences between putting an eight or a 10 in there. I just said I think an 8 won't give you the base you're after and will be massively overpowered from the from the um, subwoofer channel of the 5 channel amp so we're gonna do a big hefty 10 um, and I also spoke to him about the costing of everything and he's all good for us to go so that's good news for us here we don't have to worry about him you know going wah to the bill when we, he comes to pick it up um, and also I have just fixed his glove box it's drying at the moment but basically this pivoting point here which this hinges on um, it had broken off in the connection between the part that pivots and the actual glove box front itself and he said he'd be super glad if I could do that because like just new ones of these second hand can cost upwards of 300 bucks so I've used just some uh, five minute erudite epoxy, two part epoxy in there like on both sides I did this side then that side then pushed them together and then put some more around the seam as well that'll dry uh, it dries pretty quick in about five minutes but then it fully cures over 24 hours and this stuff once it's dry is super super strong I've used it for so many it's great for fixing car parts it's where is it? It's so strong. And it's great because it doesn't dry like um, super glue where it goes like real thin and brittle. It actually dries with a slightly rubbery texture. Not as much as RTV silicone, but rubbery enough that you can kind of feel it with your fingernail. Aerodite, five minute Aerodite Epoxy Adhesive Sellies is the brand we use. This one is different to the one we normally get. I don't know why, or maybe they just changed the labeling. Holds up to 75 kgs. 75 kgs, oh my, that's a lot. I wonder how much of this you would have to use to hold 75 kgs. Maybe the whole thing. But no, it's super strong. We use it all the time for fixing car parts that are either broken when we find them or if on the odd occasion. Because shit happens, you pull a panel off and a part of it decides it wants to stay on the car 
you break something, this stuff is great for fixing it. So that's done. And the parts we needed arrived in. The um, amp and the sub are hopefully gonna arrive on Monday. The harness for the uh, CAN bus arrived and the fitting kit has arrived. Now I could just plug this into this, call it a day, call it done, be like, yep, that's good enough. No, that's not how I do things. I hate ISO blocks. What's the point of having an ISO block? It's like a connection, 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 connection. The more connections there are, the weaker your system is. And if you have less of them, the better. Now I, so this is a little CAN bus adapter that um, this whole harness here would be great if you were installing a new stereo into the one of these cars and not doing a full install. Because this little thing, A, it interprets the CAN bus and gives you accessory, illumination, speed, parking, brake, and reverse. It also does the steering wheel controls and it also, oh, this harness is already pre-wired to work with uh, RCA outputs from the head unit into the factory amplifier. But we're not using any of that. Literally the only thing I'm using in this whole harness is permanent earth obviously and then the CAN bus interface side of this to give me accessory and reverse and illumination so most of this I'm not using so I'm wondering whether I should cut any of this or if I just want to I definitely don't I'm not going to use the ISOs I hate having ISOs and these as well little crimps that you can switch around I'm just gonna cut these off here you're better off putting some effort into properly soldering things once the right way around rather than having as many connections as you can possibly have in a stereo system. The amp control output, I'm just gonna leave that one actually as a crimp, since I'll probably put a crimp on it anyway. Now the oh, so now the reverse one's all the way down here. I might extend that a wee bit. Or should I just, yeah, I will extend it. And the speaker wires can be cut as well. These won't be getting used. and then I cut the parking brake wire to the same length as well. I won't be hooking the parking brake wire up to the parking brake output of the CAN bus interface. What we do is we just put the parking brake wire straight to ground so that you're never in a situation where you can't access certain settings of the stereo because you're not parked. The whole parking brake wire thing with doubled in stereos on touchscreen ones is, is designed to be a little security system so that you're not going through a whole bunch of stuff or watching movies while you're driving so that you can't like if you have this connected up to the handbrake then um, it won't let you do certain settings or watch movies while you're driving so we just hook this straight to ground so that you can do whatever you want whenever you want um, there is no laws around it we're not breaking any laws um, it's not a legal thing it's just like a it's just a security thing that you can wire up if you want to be all precious and secure but we just, you see New Zealanders are bad, bad enough drivers, but like, we'll, we're gonna leave it in the hands of the driver to be responsible and not be driving along going, like watching a movie or touching things while he's driving. That's up to the driver. So we just hook it straight to ground, is what I was trying to say there, really long wise. What else have we got here? So how much of this do I need? Cause I cut the ISO out completely. So we got our permanent, and our earth for the stereo. Illumination and accessory. Yoss. Speaker wires. I just cut the ISO blocks out completely because I just think they're a waste of space because they take up a big amount of space in the hole. And a connection, just yet another connection is another uh, high impedance point or a weak point in an electrical system. The less connections, the better. So realistically, now do I want to just plug this on or should I just cut the, the black and the yellow and... Because all I need is the black, the yellow and the white and the dark blue, I think. I think that's all I need. Or do I just leave it all as one thing? You know what, I think I might just install this whole thing and leave the speaker wires and the uh, RCAs unconnected so that in the event of I'm ever selling this car or taking the amp out and putting it somewhere else or something like that, it's not a problem to install another stereo into this car and we can wire it up properly. In fact, what I'll do is I'll wire up the speaker wires to these as well, just for the sake of, you know, why not? Um, the rear speaker wires don't go anywhere and the front speaker wires will go to the speakers, but when I run new wires from my amp, they'll get disconnected. So they'll also go nowhere and it'll be pre-wired for it. So, yeah, that's what I'll do. And then the RCAs will just get taped up and left loose. 
and then that one there is the remote wire for the factory amp. That's the, that green one there is the parking brake, we're not gonna use that. This purple one here with the white strap is reverse, we will use that. Yeah, cool, I'm gonna solder these together. Is my oh, light there is my loom all soldered together and taped up and managed and everything like that so I wired up the speaker wires and everything and what and the RCAs are individually taped up and then loomed back with the back uh, rest of the loom so the reason I did I wired up the speaker wires I thought I said before but I can't remember if I said it right or not is because even though it's a the reason I do it is because it makes it tidier rather than having a whole bunch of like terminated ends or taped up ends of wire or something like that so I just wire them up anyway because e even of what even though I've wired them up they're not going to get connected to anything in the end anyway so the rear speaker wires don't go anywhere they they stop here because they're not in the loom and the front speaker wires will end up stopping inside the doors where they won't get used so there's no harm in wiring them up even less harm with an alpine stereo because you can actually turn the internal amplifier off but pioneers you can't and then we got the little interface that plug on the end there is where you normally plug in a patch lead for the stereo control um controls or output but since the stereo this car doesn't have any stereo controls obviously we don't need that so i'm about to plug this in and when i do CAN bus interfaces i just like to uh test everything and make sure it's all good oh only thing i need to just really check is that all the power outputs work like accessory illumination and reverse that's about it because they're the things that aren't normally in this car Okay, so, queso, queso, I need an earth, so I'll just use the aerial, that should be earthed, right there, and we can test that by touching here, yep, we have an earth, unplug the factory stereo, so now, test it at the stereo end, first step, test accessory, key, ignition, nothing, hmm, we have, power there oh yeah we do have power okay that's interesting key off and then pull the key out okay so accessory is working on off out she works okay cool that's accessory tested illumination on this should work i think without the key yep on now this does this have a dimmer control this doesn't appear to have a dimmer control so that's good that works next thing I need to test is reverse start by putting it in reverse test it here we don't appear to have reverse you check the lights are going are uh, going why don't we have reverse this is annoying because the whole point of this is to give me that well, that's most annoying why isn't that working because there's not really much you can do when these things don't work they're supposed to just plug in and work fudge hmm it's not a negative switching is it you buy things because you think they're gonna work they say they'll work but then they don't no reverse Fuck. okay well that's real annoying about the reverse not working and interesting that I'm pretty sure the um, parking brake output isn't working either um, yeah who knows this is just one of those things that when, just yet another reason why I hate CAN bus vehicles or European cars just because like even when you go and get an interface which is made for the car they just have to, it just makes it so much more complicated and the chances of things not working are high or well, higher than if it just had analog wires to begin with but anyway um, one thing I'm not going to worry about that now I'm, I've got an idea as to how I'm going to tackle the issue later on down the track but um, I'll figure that out once in a while you guys will see why because I'm thinking I might run like as opposed to one remote wire I might run a piece of two core to be remote for the amp and reverse signal from the reverse light back there instead because um, these wires all up in here where the reverse wire probably is are very well loomed up and I don't want to just go opening that all up and probing around 
so assuming I put the amp back there I'll but I'll wait until I know I'm doing that I'll probably run two pieces of wire one for the remote for the amp and the other one to connect onto the reverse light and that's how I'll get my reverse but I don't need to worry about that now what I need to do is I need to figure out which aerial adapter is needed because it's set because I never know fully which one is required without testing both of them an amplified or a non amplified one so I always start off with the non amplified option which is just a little plug on adapter and then I test to see how much reception we get and then I try it with the amplified one and see if it improves no AM on 612 okay so now we'll try it with this one which has the built-in amplifier I think this one is going to be the one that works and then when we go like this the remote one there it is it's bad but it's, it's better yep it's this one cool so all I need to do is solder this to that oh and I also mounted the head unit in the fitting kit because I hate because I'm one of those people who when they come across problems or hookups they just you know I just let it simmer and try and forget about it until I really have to tackle it I'm not very good at tackling problems head-on I always push them under the rug but anyway all I need to do is solder these two together I can do that Give me two seconds. Oh well, so uh, that's pretty much the stereo done, I think, for the time being. I could probably plug some stuff in, shove all that stuff through there. Is it the right kit? Oh no! That's the wrong fucking kit. What the fuck? This is supposed to be for this car. Oh good. I have to get a different kit in. How does that? Like I went onto the website and did it by the model year. Oh my god, Metro, really? Oh, this sort of shit always happens here. It's a simple case of the car being from one year and the dash in it being from another year. So this is a 2002 dash in a 2001 car and that's the year in which it changed crap so I'm gonna have to order another one this kit ain't the one but oh well sitting in there for now that is so annoying though mm. I feel like this car is just gonna be a whole one problem after another isn't it it's an Audi they always are oh Jesus okay I better get on the phone okay yep. so that problem aside I think I've done most of what I can do now with the products we have on hand into this car I don't want to start doing any amplifier related stuff until I'm 100% aware of where I'm putting the amp. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the front speakers and try and whack them out. Also got to remember to run some speaker wire from the crossover. I want to, in this car, I want to hide the crossover blocks inside the door because I don't know if I really want to be running tweeter and woofer wires from the trunk all the way out to the front this time. Done that enough recently. So I want to hide the crossover in the door if possible, but if not, it will have to go back in the trunk with the amp. And I need to run wires out of the door through the grommet into the kick panel at least, so that um, I can connect onto them once I've done the amp. So I'm gonna move on to the woofers now. Uh, and there is a backup plan for these because I've done Audis and I've done Focal woofers before, and they are fat and sometimes they don't fit. If they don't fit, if I can't make them fit, the backup plan is Alpine Type R's because they have a small magnet on them and they're very easy to install. But that's only a backup plan. So I've got to get this off. I suppose one good thing is that this woofer is really far out from the door, which means chances of getting the focals in here are probably high, so that's good. Some of these are really good, like they have a pod that you can just remove the factory speaker from and mount your new one in. I think I did that a while ago. Was that a Volkswagen or something where I did the coaxial focals in the back? Yep. Oh god, this could be bad. There is literally like an important rail right there attached to the bottom of where the speaker mounts. How much depth is there? Approximately, yay. Oh man, I don't know if that's gonna be enough for the Focals, eh? Plus this. Oh, I need to know if this here 
That there is probably the maximum depth. Oh, okay, there's actually a bit of room behind the back of the speaker in the woofer. Uh, it could be possible. Could be possible. If I can use this, what I could do is butcher this uh, pod and put the new woofer in it. I've done that before. Okay. So that is in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I reckon we'll be all right for depth if I can get that in there. Potentially, ooh, if I cut this woofer completely out of here, maybe. Mm, the screw hole's lined right up with the very edge thing. What's the point of all of that shit being in, what is all this stuff? Ugh. What's the point of all that stuff being right in front of the woofer? Hardly any of the sound's gonna get out. It's so silly. For the sake of making the grill a bit smaller looking. I don't know, eh? Come on, Audi. Hmm. Didn't I say that it wouldn't be just a simple install? How big of a baffle would I have to make? Oh man, a huge one. Bigger than two, double 18. I'd have to make like 18 plus 18 plus like 12 or 9 or something. Who knows? It'd be so much better if I could get it in this thing. I think I might try. Daddy's ever going to put these big back in. Let's give it a go. Because what's cool then is you can solder the connections for these uh, terminals here to the connections at the back here. And then you can just use the plug-in system. Okay, I'm gonna fuck with this thing. You guys better give me some time. And I'll see if I can get that woofer in here. That, because that would be the best thing. One eternity later. Okay, guys. Ages and ages of time later, I have a woofer in the door. Whew, took a while. Let me show you. So depth-wise, it seems to fit. I um, have had a look under here, behind looking at the back of the speaker, and from what I can see, the piece of foam, uh, like sort of just soft protective foam that I put on the bar behind the speaker to protect it from, you know, scratching on the back of the woofer, it appears to be uncompressed from what I can tell. It means that it's not pushing it against it, but it is touching, but not compressing it, so it's literally got like one or two millimeters clearance. And I've already checked, nothing go, uh, moves or goes up and down behind the speaker. So there's no chance of it getting hit by anything. So, this comes off. That's the piece of foam I was talking about. You can, t you can see that. So you can see that piece of foam there. That's about a mil or two thick, about two mils thick. And with this little piece of footage that I took from, with my hand in here, with my phone, you can see that the uh, foam is uncompressed. Which means that the back of this speaker isn't actually pushing on the metal, it's just very lightly touching the foam. So, the way I've mounted this to here, first of all this little thing just like kind of pops off. That adds about a mil, I suppose. And then what I did was, took a while, but I, um, you know, flattened out the inside of here, the power file, did a whole bunch of filing, and uh, mounted the woofer from behind, so it slots in from behind. And then, I had to put this metal ring here on top to sandwich it uh, because what plastic that was left there was very thin and there was no way I could use it. So this metal ring here is an adapter that came with a speaker at some point. I don't know what it came off. I'm hoping I could find another one. But um, I've used four M4 bolts going through this to the back of the woofer with a nut, a spring washer and a washer on the back of the woofer, um, one in each corner. So this, the outside of this ring is pushing down on the rubber 45 degree cut which is along this thing because that's the reason I didn't put the speaker on top because that 45 degree cut which is backed up by plastic I couldn't make that like vertical enough to, I couldn't get the speaker in this way, it had to go from behind. Very complicated but the point is I have got the speaker in the pod in a working situation. Only thing I haven't done is uh, modified the connections. I'm gonna cut these bits of metal because they're a wee bit long for my liking and then solder some wires from them directly up to the speaker terminals. Yeah, that's it. That's how it's working. I'm just hoping I can find another one of these metal brackets because I only, I had this one out for a while and yeah, hopefully there's another one somewhere. So yay, having some level of success, I suppose. There we go, I put wires from A to B and B to A. And no, A to A and B to B. 
that wouldn't be good. So that goes on, and now this thing. Something else I didn't mention was I actually had to carve out a whole bunch of plastic underneath this big pod that was there just so I could get the woofer in under it. You can see the edge of the woofer there, that was all plastic. She wasn't easy. There we go. Okay, the woofer in. Something else um, I have, by the way, checked for to make sure is that this woofer isn't going to be hitting on this ring here. Look, for it to be, for the membrane to be hitting that ring, it would have to be doing like its absolute maximum excursion like topping out amounts of excursion and that's not something I intend to the speaker really to be doing because that's not going to sound good. Obviously if there's any problems I wouldn't le let it leave the workshop in a condition where I wasn't 100% happy with it. So if any of you guys are worrying about some of the things I'm doing all you need to know is that don't worry it won't be given back to the customer in a condition that is less than good, you know, less than perfect. Right, let's see if it goes. going. I think that those wires there must be on full range because uh, sounding quite high because I need to put the crossover in yet and the tweeter. Spent most of my day doing one woofer, but what do you do? It's an Audi. So that's good, that's working. Does this work in both ports? I think it does. Yeah, it does, look at that. Yeah. So what I can do is I can just cut these wires and then run and solder some new ones on and extend them to the crossover when I do that. Oh, let's do the window check. All I need to do is just, you know, make sure that this isn't in any way moving. No, I don't feel anything happening. Nothing negative. And the window still goes up and down totally fine, so that's all good. But does the door card go on? No, I don't need to test that. It's the original pod, it's fine. Well, there we go, guys. You can tell by the sound in the background that it's the end of the day. We're packing up. Oh, man. A lot of time spent on this one woofer. At least I know how to do the other one now. Doing the first woofer always takes time because you're kind of figuring it out as you go. That's good, that's good to go. That's gonna work. Happy. Here's what it looks like close up. Original pod. Sweet as. Okay, so that is the end of today guys. I didn't get to do the Corvette. The carpet hasn't arrived. Someone has cocked up. Carpet isn't here. But I got the camera done, most of the stereo stuff done, couple of hiccups along the way. Obviously it's an Audi. CAN bus interface not working, fitting kit being wrong, getting that woofer in there. Who the hell knows where I'm gonna put the crossover. Looks like there's room for the tweeter. Hopefully, wait, where is the tweeter? Oh, it's up there. Oh yeah, I can get the tweeter in there, no worries. But where am I gonna put the crossover? Maybe I could put the crossover down here or something. In this gap. I'm not sure. You guys will have to tune in on Monday to find out. So thank you for watching today's video, guys. Hopefully I didn't do too any, um, anything that made any of you cringe a bit too much. So thank you guys for watching. Choose to be happy. I will see you Monday. Kakitano.